back here on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast to bring up an old, still relevant topic in the Atlanta Falcons and the Eagles tampering situation, the alleged tampering um, that occurred when they signed their biggest signings of the offseason, Saquon Barkley for the Eagles and Kirk Cousins for the Atlanta Falcons. Um, It happened a while ago, I mentioned at the start of the new league year, when the tampering um, phase of the offseason commenced on that Monday, I want to say, when the league year started on that Wednesday. I want to say it was March 13th exactly. Um, I don't have the date in front of me, but just off of my memory, I want to say March 13th, and there is a technical tampering period that is allowed for any pending free agents to get a head start, maybe test the waters out a little bit, get their agents to see what's out there for them. And I mentioned, I emphasize agents because that is the only part allowed that the NFL allows with this tampering phase. The agents can go out and communicate, make any sort of contact with teams that are not, um, uh, that they don't have contracts with. You're not the team that you are contracted with until the new league year starts. That is the only team you're allowed to talk to until that Wednesday when the new league year started. Um, And that's where all the confusion starts to come about because it was during that tampering period that you saw everyone go bananas when um, the Eagles announced that they were signing um, Saquon Barkley or really I should say the insiders because the teams can't officially announce that because they're not allowed to technically. So you see... Guys like Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport, Mike Garofolo, Tom Pelissero, all these guys announced these deals that eventually happen, but it is reported or they say um, is expected to. Nothing is finalized in technical verbiage, but it is expected and it does end up happening like these two deals did. Um, And then you have the introductory press conference, and that's where the confusion and these doubts start to come about. That's what raised the antennas for the NFL. Starting with the uh, Falcons, they were ultimately the biggest culprits of this tampering allegations, these tampering situations, because like I mentioned during Kirk Cousins' his introductory press conference, he said that um, that he had talked with Atlanta's head athletic trainer during the... um, tampering window or potentially even before that uh, excuse me he mentioned that he had made prior contact to the new league year with the head athletic trainer again that's against the rules not allowed to talk with any other member of any other organization he was still technically part of the Minnesota Vikings so he wasn't allowed to do that and it was also reported that on top of the athletic trainer he spoke with their director of player personnel too Ryan Pace, um, that's his name, the athletic um, or the director of player personnel, Ryan Pace. That was allegedly, that one seemed a bit more doubtful, but it was out there. Um, And it also was said that Cousins was in direct contact with Kyle Pitts, who had been actively recruiting him for multiple weeks. That one's a bit more vague and a bit harder to prove, which is why this has still been ongoing, I'm sure. Um, But even on top of that, it it was also reported that Kirk Cousins played a part in recruiting Darno Moody as well. He also admitted, allegedly, so I just named off like four things right there that Kirk Cousins couldn't do. Um, So the league is investigating that, how much was said, what was said exactly, and all the technical stuff that they have to investigate with this sort of case. But with so many allegations and so many scenarios that could be true with Kirk Cousins. This one is expected to be a bit more severe, as um, Adam Schefter reported, um, just because um, it could result in them taking away a draft pick before today, and I'll get that into a, I'll just get into that in a few seconds here, but before today, it could have been a draft pick because of everything that I just listed off with Kirk Cousins, Um, but like, I'll touch on that in a second. And now you move on to the Philadelphia Eagles. And this one was even a bit trickier to understand because with Saquon, uh, he, again, his deal was announced by these insiders, these reporters 
uh, during the tampering period. It was expected to happen. And then once the new league year started, the Eagles officially announced it. It all became official. And at his introductory press conference, they asked him about the comments his former head coach, the head coach of the Penn State football team, James Franklin, they asked him about his comments and trying to bait him a little bit, I guess, into um, admitting there was some potential tampering going on, but James Franklin basically um, revealed a possible tampering situation when he said in an interview that Saquon, um, you know, he fit well with the Eagles. He said that he felt that Saquon Barkley spoke directly with Howie Roseman and that they had positive conversations, which is what swayed Saquon Barkley ultimately in the end. They asked Saquon about what James Franklin said about him having direct contact with Howie Roseman and Barkley as everyone would imagine denied it basically saying that um, he felt that his former coach misunderstood what he meant to say when he told his former coach about his decision Um, he just denied it basically Howie Roseman denied it as well um, along with the Philadelphia Eagles so that one's a bit trickier. You can't really, because it involves a third party, it is harder to find out what James Franklin said and how that involves Saquon and Harry Roseman and stuff like that. But with Kirk Cousins, that one seems a bit more serious because it all had to do with him. He reached out. He reached out to this person, and he had Kyle Pitts reach out to him. That one's expected to be a bit more serious, according to Adam Schefter. Um... He reported that yesterday, and he also said that the punishment was supposed to fall in line this week. And this is where it kind of all threw me into a loop, because on my way here, I saw that the NFL, in response to what Adam Schefter said yesterday, they announced today that a decision on both of these tampering allegations would not be decided on this week, would not happen before the draft as it was expected, so... In saying that, this is just sort of all an update on what could be um, based on what Adam Schefter reported and a possible punishment. Before this, I thought it was going to happen before the draft as it did last year with the Arizona Cardinals and the Philadelphia Eagles. If you remember, um, last year the NFL announced quite literally right before the draft that same day that the resolution between the Cardinals and the Eagles over... Uh, another tampering allegation, potentially the Cardinals reaching out to the Eagles um, defensive coordinator, Jonathan Gannon, who is now their head coach, prior to the period that they were allowed to. So they were accused of tampering. They were <clears throat> they ended up swapping picks, both of those teams. So that was announced right before the draft. And it doesn't seem that severe, but... It's almost the same thing that's happening happening here, and that was expected to be the punishment, but with this, now the Falcons and the Philadelphia Eagles can sort of breathe a sigh of relief because even though I really didn't think they were going to affect the first-round pick, doubtedly the second-round pick, it was still going st- to gonna take away a potential draft pick on day two maybe most likely on day three with the Eagles. Maybe you could look at the second round with the Falcons, but it was going to affect the draft in some way, as many people expected it to, if they were going to come to a decision this week. Now, because it is pushed past this week, it won't affect the draft, and now you ask these questions of why it's taking so long, what could be holding it up, now what could be the punishment potentially. Of course, you could look to the draft next year but you know to announce that in July June or something like that it just would seem odd for the NFL to wait that long um and just announce it for next year's draft and how that would affect it it doesn't hold the same um weight in all honesty by doing that um I think teams would just brush it off and it wouldn't really create an effect with all the other teams to get them to think you know like hey don't tamper or else this is a serious matter that could really affect you. If they're just taking away a draft pick next year, not even a second round or a first round pick, it. I think all their teams are just going to brush it off and it's not really going to create or do any um, real good, any real change to getting teams to stop doing this. So there's that. And 
You look at other situations prior to this. I mentioned the Eagles and the Cardinals last year. The most severe punishment actually fell on the Miami Dolphins. That affects them now in 2024 as well when they had their 2023 first round pick and their third round pick this year um, stripped from them completely for tampering with Tom Brady and Sean Payton a few years ago trying to recruit them over to join them over there in Miami. They were accused and found guilty of tampering them, communicating with them prior to when they were allowed. So they, the NFL took away their first round pick completely last year and um, their third round pick in this year's draft. So that one was a bit more severe because more people think, most people think that it happened over a few years. It happened first in one year with Tom Brady, then they did it again with Sean Payton in the following year or the year before. Um, so that's probably why it was more severe for them. And taking away a first-round pick is probably as bad as it gets, um, especially where the Miami Dolphins were at that point um, in their rebuilding, retooling process. So that was as severe as it can get. I didn't expect that to happen to the Falcons or the Eagles, but regardless, if it was a second-round pick, it still would have been taken pretty seriously. And now, again, you have to ask, when is the NFL going to de uh, decide to announce this sort of decision with tampering and still having it um, create that ripple effect to all the other teams to try and get them to stop doing this, to follow their guidelines and their set dates for tampering and not breaking those codes of contact. And it is unclear, like I mentioned, why the NFL is taking so long, but you know, with the draft coming up and all the other situations, it's, it seems like they've taken a lot longer with figuring out um, they had to get the scheduling down for the Brazil games, the Christmas Day games. So you understood that, why they didn't um, attend to this matter before. But now, you know, what other situations do they have to deal with? You know, I just could not know. But it seems like they've addressed everything so far. So it is a bit odd that they announced just a day right after that they're not going to apply any punishment yet to these both of these teams. They could still be looking for more information. But I think a lot of people, a lot of teams were just left confused around the NFL, as was I. But, you know, that's where the situation stands. Updating you guys on the tampering situation, why it could be taking so long and where the Falcons or the Eagles could have gone wrong in their off-season transactions. But that's all the information I have as of this moment. We're going to put a pin in that conversation and transition into the last segment of the show. We're going to go into a quick break just for a few seconds. And on the other side, I'm going to talk about the Chargers and what their general manager, Joe Hortiz, said about any trade scenario that any other team wants to propose to them, what they're looking for, and what their mindset is heading into the first round of the NFL Draft. So stick around. You're going to want to find out what he said here in just a few seconds. <laughs> 